Excellencies, distinguished guests, friends and colleagues. It is for me an honor to open this forum and I would like to say that we in UNCCD are very grateful to BMZ and the government of Germany for supporting the work of C4 and for bringing the GLF here in Bonn. If you think now about the sheer scale of the transformation mankind has imposed on the land over the last couple of centuries, it is indeed very alarming. Over the last two decades alone, 20 to 30 percent of the Earth's vegetated surface has experienced persistent declining trends in productivity. That is mainly as a result of land and water use and, of course, management practices. This despite the fact that most of the resources which we depend on as a species come from the Earth. For example, did you know that more than 90% of all the calories we consume come from the land? So what we are doing right now to the land is like a slow motion suicide. Actually, the 19th century US President James Garfield stated that suicide is not a remedy. And to step away from the age, we need to turn these trends on the heads. The integrated landscape approach on its own will not be enough. In fact, I should say, I am not a fan at all of the term landscape approach. It is ambitious, yes, but it fails to convey our common vision to the outside world. Decision makers, for example, just don't get it. It does not also translate well into other language. I don't know, Mr. Minister, how you are going to translate it in French, but it is really awful. So, but perhaps more importantly, it tends to overlook small-scale farmers. The small-scale farmers are the true essence of rural communities. They have been the backbone of food production for millennium. Their lives and livelihoods cannot be traded away. That is no remedy either. They must be protected. So what then can turn the trend and transformation on its head? We need, I think, a clear, measurable, and impactful target. We need to communicate it more convincingly to the outside world. And we need a way to govern our relationship with the land so that no one is left behind. And to my mind, the work that we are currently doing in UNCCD can help do just that. Under SDG 15, the international community has formulated an ambitious vision for the land management of the future, a land degradation neutral world in 2030. We can achieve so-called land degradation neutrality by conserving the land we have, avoiding the degradation of new land, and managing land sustainably. At the same time, restoring the land we have already degraded. LDN targets are currently being set at the national level with today 114 countries already committed. In fact, more than 70 have already set the baseline using UNCCD land-based indicators. Interestingly, the same data sets are also being used for the SDG indicator itself. This will be the first time we will have comprehensive land degradation estimates that are validated by countries. Done right, the potential of LDN, particular in terms of rehabilitation, is huge. But 
recognizing we can't do everything everywhere, we have to target our efforts. We can focus LDN on the 75% of the world's poorest people. For most, land is their only asset. And 1.3 billion people are trapped on degrading agricultural land. LDN is the best chance we have to build a sustainable future for those people. And it works. More than 1 million hectares of degraded agriculture and forest land has been restored, for example, in East and Central Tigray in Ethiopia alone. The knock-on effect gave women a prominent role, encouraged children to attend school, improve social cohesion, and reduce migration levels. It works to the extent that the private sector is finally taking notice. At the One Planet Summit in Paris last week, the LDN Fund, an initiative promoted by UNCCD and managed by a private sector company to invest in the rehabilitation of land, has been recognized as one of the 12 emerging ways to deliver sustainable development and fight climate change at the same time. But to be clear, neither the UN nor the private sector see LDN as just another target. It is more of an operational framework for an entirely new land agenda. Many elements of this agenda are detailed in our publication, The Global Land Outlook that you will find outside. To be successful, LDN and the broader new land agenda has to be based on a revolution in how we govern the land. It needs an approach based on rights, rewards, and responsibility. In terms of rights, there are two pressing elements, land tenures and resource rights, which allow small holders to plan for the future and pass down their hard-won livelihoods to the next generation. Overall, in Africa, only about 10% of rural land is registered, leaving 90% vulnerable. Of course, there are other institutional barriers that obstruct progress on the ground, especially emerging issues like land grabbing. But to be clear, without secure access to land resources, the uptake of SLM practices and restoration will not accelerate as fast, as fast or spread as widely as we need. At the same time, gender inequality, whether in terms of land tenures, access to credit and technology, legal rights or inheritance, discourages the participation of women in land management activities. Closing the gender gap in the use of inputs and technologies could increase yields for women farmers by 20 to 30 percent and raise total agriculture output in developing countries by up to 4 percent. In terms of rewards, the stewards of the land need to be compensated for safeguarding the good functioning of the land. After all, our collective food security and economic growth depend on this natural capital. Incentives in the form of payment for services, insurance schemes, or the creation of strong value chains would help shift the market toward more sustainable production. Finally, in terms of responsibility, land use planning is about doing the right thing in the right place at the right scale. So finally, without a sense of responsibility for preserving the diverse function of the land, management decision will always favor the lowest common denominator. Responsibility means long-term thinking and planning for the future, 
It means cooperation and working together to optimize mutual outcome. It is a collective responsibility of consumers, producers, and everyone in between. Government at all scale can also play a very important role. So moving forward, we need to work collectively to make a revolution in land governments a reality. But as Alexis de Tocqueville, the French writer of revolution noted, in a revolution, as in a novel, the most difficult part to invent is always the end. But I am convinced, and I hope you are too, if we get an equitable balance between rights, rewards, and responsibility, if we are able to achieve LDN, we will reduce emissions, save biodiversity, and improve the human condition. This will, in turn, halt and turn the transformations of the last century on its head, a revolutionary idea that could end centuries of collective destruction. I thank you. <laughs>